I'm in front of Katz's Delicatessen on the Lower East Side, where you can find the finest pastrami on earth. Now, Katz's is really a throwback. It's one of the few remaining vestiges of the New York City Jewish delicatessen. So I moved to the Lower East Side 30 years ago and I moved to Rivington Street, which is just down the street. The first time that I came here was not unlike today. It was a November day. I remember it was grim and gray out. I was on the way to see a band. So I see this gleaming edifice in the distance and I walk up and the windows were kind of misted up and I look through that window right there where all the grills are and I just saw this line of knockwurst and hot dogs and behind that heaps of pastrami with guys with knives and it was this mad rush of people at the counter. It was just like, just an amazing experience. I'd never seen anything like that in my life. It was kind of intimidating, right? I didn't know how to order, made my way in. First thing I ever had there was a hot dog because I couldn't afford the pastrami at the time. Ordering this, I looked over at the pastrami counter over there and I saw them carving this most magnificent side of pastrami. Big, thick slices. You can see the steam billowing off it. And the, you see the bits of the, of the uh, rub sort of flying off as, as you saw through this glorious meat. Well, I vowed that that would be my next meal. And the next time I had 475, because I think it was just under five bucks at the time, I came and had this sandwich and it changed my life. I mean, how could it not? Look at the size of the thing. Okay, so if your only experience of pastrami is like one of those national sandwich chains, you have not had pastrami. This is an artisanal meat product. It's produced here in the same way that it's been for over a century, since 1888, in fact. It's not like most pastrami. Most pastrami is actually made from brisket. They use beef navels here, which have a different flavor. I mean, it's similar because it comes from the underbelly, right? But there's something about the striation of muscle and it's got this fibrous quality, not unlike the Spanalis Dorsi on the rib steak, which is my favorite kind of beef. This has many of those same structural traits. It's got a real supple and liveness to it. Let's examine this. First of all, it's definitely a two-handed sandwich. I mean, you might not even eat a third jaw to eat this thing. Mmm, mmm. Tragedy, it fell apart completely, but I have a solution for this. I'm just gonna hide it in my mouth. The rye bread is doing its utmost best to corral this beef in, but there's just no way it can do it. I mean, it has sort of formed around it, almost the way that a sort of a hamburger bun disintegrates around a hamburger when all the juices start flowing, but this is way more meat than any hamburger I'd want to eat. Because of the way they cook this, because it's smoked for long hours and then steamed, you're eliciting as much flavor as you can get out of this. Plus, you have this, this really pungent spice rub of coriander and salt and pepper that just permeates the meat with this sort of floral flavor. It's just one of the most compelling meat dishes you can get. One thing I love about this sandwich, it has not changed one iota. When I take a bite of this pastrami, it takes me back 30 years to when I first had it. And this has always been a destination place to eat, and it always will be. Not only that, I recommend Katz's is the best place to eat pastrami. If you like that, be sure to click down below and watch the next one. The meat pie dates back to the Egyptian times. The Egyptians gave it to the Greeks. I am here to try to bring the meat pie back to the States.